after the ball is over, after the skein is done, after the die lots finished, and you are short just one. Many a knitter has made. A tearful and desperate call, pleading with their local yarn shop, go after that ball. Hello. Hi. Welcome to Pen Hook and Needles, episode 118. It is Tuesday, September 2nd. Wow. September 2nd. I know. Three weeks to retreat, four weeks to the Fiber Festival. Yay! Shenandoah. Two weeks to vacation. Yeah. Emily, Fiber Town, look forward to seeing you there. Um, anyway. Um, I am Frances Can Gypsy, also known as, uh, Talia in real life, but I'm Frances Can Gypsy on Ravelry and Instagram and most everywhere else on the interwebs. And I'm Marlisha, also known as Lady Fernico, just about everywhere. Except where I'm not. Um, very astute observation. Yes, where I'm usually shadow light or more like shot on most of my writing sites. I feel like the camera's having some difficulty focusing. Focusing, yeah. But it might be I, the difference is, in lighting. This is the best that we've been able to get so far, so I think it's going to stay. Yeah. Um, do we mention this is Penhook and Eels podcast? Yes, but not about the song. <clears throat> the song is that you just finished hearing is After the Ball is Over by Ren Ross, obtained from moviealley.com for media. Do we have to keep doing that now that we have it up on the, on the, uh... Chances, I do you know, as long as we have it in that little slide, I think we're okay. I think we're okay, because I don't think Denise, <clears throat> uh, does, she has it on the, uh... Slide? On the slide, and... We're co probably covered. Yeah. Hopefully that's the case. Um, but in any event, that's who we are, and that's where the music comes from. We want to welcome everybody... Uh, we're gr glad you came back. We want to welcome all new and returning viewers. Mm -hmm. We're glad to have you with us. Um, if you are watching us or listening to us and you're not a member of the Ravelry group, please we, join. Yeah, please join us. We're having a lot of fun. We're in the middle of our cardiac along. I have seen the YouTube comments and the Ravelry comments. I am slowly but surely trying to catch up on all my different venues. And I haven't seen the YouTube comments yet, so... I told um, you about the one lady who's not actually a neighbor who watches. Oh, yeah, that's fun. Which is fun. Okay. She let us know... Oh, my hair is doing weird things. Um, she let us know that the Spock... Meow. Meow! That the Spock symbol actually does have the thumb Have the thumb, yes. We thank her for that. So. That's harder <laughs> than the other way. Well, that's why it takes so much talent. Yeah. I bet it came about because Nimoy had, like, a crazy uh, talent for... Yeah. Okay. Separating lunch. Anyway, before we go any further, we have welcomed all of the viewers, but I do want to have a special welcome for those who um, have joined the group officially. Angie's versus his friends. Sorry. Because Lynn, Rude Lynn, child. Lynn, Lynn to be your arms and your legs, I but Lynn to be your fact, fingers. Care. Okay, I'm done. Anyway, we would like to welcome <laughs> our new members who actually joined the group this time around. Um, five Angel SCA, Five Angels, Ca I guess it's Five Angels California or maybe Five Angels Canada. I'm not I've sure. always read Five Angels Ca. <laughs> well, I, I think that it's where she's from. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And that's, that's always what I've read. And that's Julie, Five Angels. They, welcome, Julie, however that is. Um, we welcome Orange Maid, who is Helen. B Rocker, who is Brenda. Heart for Feathers, I love that, who is Sandy. Uh, Jojo RE83, and I don't know her name. She doesn't have a name on Ravelry, but we welcome her. Oh, and I love this name, too. Siberian Cat, who is Penny. Um, welcome ab aboard. We're glad to have you with us. Please feel free to jump in any of the threads, especially the uh, project threads, the show-off, and the uh, cardiac awareness thread. Mm -hmm. So welcome aboard. Yay! We are ready for cardiac awareness. Indeed. Um, so, oh, grab your tea or coffee or whatever it is you're drinking. I have chai tea. Um... A little sip of my peppermint. Well, actually, it's um, holiday mint. Something like that. It's got spearmint and peppermint in it. I've been on my Christmas tea kick. Mm -hmm. um, so the cardiac along has been running um, from September 
From July 1st to September 30th. This is the last month. This is the last month of it. But there's still plenty of time. Um, yes. And the focus is to knit or crochet using the color red in some significant way in your projects with cardiac awareness in mind. Um, Somebody did that little toadstool doll that I like so much. Yeah, I, li I really like the designer. You said that. Oh, the one with this cream, the creepy Paula toy. <laughs> Not creepy. It's so adorable. I love it. She, it's got the little red toadstool hat. It's so cute. I love her patterns. Oh, it's cute, but it is creepy. At the no, same time. it is not. In, no, it is absolutely adorable. I absolutely love them. I just haven't had a chance to make it. I can't remember the designers. I name. have a friend in California whose name is Paul, and when Mom told me about this pattern, I was like, hey, this has your name on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the other one. I don't know if that one's called Paul or not. That Well, the one that I'm thinking of. I, that you first showed me was called yeah, Paul. Yeah, and I wanted to make it because St. Paul and blah, blah, blah. But um, anyway, you'll have to go to the thread to see it, but it's really cute. I haven't seen it yet. It's I'm really behind. Um, you completely derailed me. <laughs> uh, so, you have to knit or crochet using the color red in some significant way in your projects with cardiac awareness in mind. Um... Whips and FOs will both be eligible to be drawn for prizes. Only one whip picture per project per week and one FO picture per FO per week. Um, if you have already had a whip picture earlier in the week for the project, you may still put up an FO picture for the same project if you've finished it this, that week. Um, so, say, I'm going to use you as an example, Barry. Say you did three projects during the week. One of which was Barry. You worked on all of them during the week. But then you also finished Barry later in the week. Barry's the bread bird behind him. Um, you could count the progress picture of Barry from when you posted earlier in the week, but you can also count the finished object. So finished objects can post whenever you finish yes, it. Yes, regardless, regardless as to whether or not you had a whip picture earlier yeah. in the week. Um Project must not be finished prior to July 1st, although they, they do not have to be finished before September 30th. They have to be finished within the time period, but they don't have to be finished. They just have to be worked on during the time period, right? They cannot be finished prior to the time right, period. Right, right, right. What I was saying, well, never mind. Well, you were saying it made no sense. No, it did. I said um, they can be finished during the time period. Yes. But they don't have to be finished yes. um, during the time period. So, now that we have thoroughly confused it's you, on, the rules the, are in yeah. the thread. We, um, yeah. <laughs> but we have lots of prizes. We have lots today. of prizes. Um, Turbonator64, who is Ken, uh, donated some gorgeous lace weight yarn. Um, three skeins. Three skeins. Beautiful. Yes. Beautiful color. Perfect for fall. Um, I am donating knit red. Mom's donating um, crochet red. Those are books, in case yes. you don't know. Um, they have not only the awesome projects about cardiac, that, that, that are based on cardiac, uh, the, they were designed with cardiac awareness in mind. Right. Uh, they also have recipes in the back of the book that are heart healthy. Mm -hmm. um, then uh, Sarah Jane Designs, who is one of our members, just like Kenneth is, um, she donated five fantastic patterns, um, including... Uh, a copy of each of three of her, three? Three e-books. Yeah, three of her e-books. Cuffed, Hardware Heaven, and Ligon, Ligonberry, Ligonberry. And then plus two patterns of uh, the winner's generous, choice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Ten Hours or Less, our very own George, yes. uh, donated three awesome patterns. And he has some fantastic patterns out there as well. So, wow, I'm so um, jealous. <laughs> he um, is currently updating his site mm -hmm. and making sure his patterns are still just so. He's very professional. Yes, he is. Um, and he, George, you have been missed. We're glad to see yes. you on the boards. Yes. Um, don't work too hard. Yes. Uh, then we also have a skein of lovely yarn from Heidi, who is Nitty Girl of the Undead Yarn podcast and uh, Etsy shop. Yes. And you will see the yarn. I mean... I am knitting something out of the same yarn, same colorway that she is uh, donating. I had to laugh because she said we should just say we're giving the socks. <laughs> they can't have my socks. <laughs> Heidi makes me laugh. Um, um, so you'll see what the colorway looks like worked up in a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, 
And then Brittany, who is B Wing. Another one of our members. Another one of our members. Um, All of the people are, mem- are yes. members. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, has donated uh, three. She's donated a bunch of yarn that we split into three prizes. Mm-hmm. Um, and if Very you're, awesome. Yes. And if you want to share your images of your projects on Instagram, if you could use the hashtag PHN Red Cal, that's spelled K-A-L, uh, we'd appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was suggested by or Polly, Polly uh, who is Polly81 yeah. on Ravelry. Um, so thank you, Polly. So thank you very much. My cardiac awareness this time is going to be very brief. Just going to touch briefly on diets. Um, when you have a cardiac condition, um, one of the biggest changes is lifestyle change. Um, not only exercise to what you're able to handle, because you don't want to jump right into an extreme exercise program. Your heart might not be able to handle it. Part of the change is diet, especially if you have um, heart failure. Uh, one of the things that they'll suggest is um, low salt. That doesn't mean no. That means you know limited salt. A lot of times they say two gram or one gram salt. Well, that's not much salt. Mm-mm. Um, and they aren't just counting added salt, which is a lot. What a lot of people think think oh don't just just don't add salt to your food. No, it goes beyond that. There are things that have salt in it that you don't even realize have salt in it. You have to look at labels. You have to add it up, um, and make sure that you're not. Uh, over, not overstepping, over... Overindulging? Overindulging, I guess, yeah. Overdoing the salt. Because, as I mentioned in the last podcast, salt and water are very fond of each other, and when you have heart failure, it's just not a good combination. Um, the, um... For some reason, your, your crochet is distracting me. I'm distractible. Anyway, yeah, um, butterflies and squirrels and birdies and turtles. Yes. Oh my. <laughs> so, anyway, um, what I was saying was that um, diet becomes a very po- important change and one of the most difficult changes. If someone has heart failure, where they tend to retain fluid uh, anyway because their heart isn't pumping appropriately. The salt limitation is very important, as is, for some people, depending on what their doctor tells them, a uh, fluid restriction. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. Do not impose upon yourself a fluid restriction. Make sure you talk to your doctor. Um, It's a very delicate balance. They have to play a lot of times between between dehydration Mm -hmm. and making sure you don't retain too much fluid. Um, oh, yeah, when there's salt limitation, like, a, I've seen it as small as a 1,500 a day, 1,500 ml a day fluid restriction. Okay, you have to put that in English for the rest uh, of the Uh, mls, that's translation to cc's, um, heavens. How about ounces? I'm trying to think of it in ounces. Let me do a quick uh, conversion, because I honestly, uh... Because I would have thought... That ML. having more water would help flush out the salt. It, it, there's a, um, they tend to like each other. So, okay, so we have 1,500. Okay, that's 50 ounces. 50 ounces, so that's about... 8 ounces to a cup. Yeah, 8 ounces to a cup, so that's about 6 cups, a little more than 6 cups. Just a little more than 6 cups of water. It's not a lot. Uh-uh. Let's see if we can get it. Ah, there we go. MLs to cups. Yeah, I didn't prepare very well. So 1,500, yeah, a little over six cups. So you can understand how hard it can be to keep to a restriction for the people who really do have a severe heart failure. Sometimes they only have to have the restriction in the hospital. Sometimes they have to leave with it. So before you do any sort of self-imposed restriction, talk to the doctor. Would that restriction be um, not mediated? Would it be altered a little bit if they exercise for fluid loss? Exercise isn't going to make the fluid. I mean, you You could sweat sweat it, but it's... A lot of these people, if they have fluid that's hanging on, they can't catch their breath because it's all the fluid weight makes it harder for them. 
Um, and a lot of times heart failure doesn't come by itself. It's also accompanied with uh, COPD, which is um, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, which is another issue where you have difficulty catching your breath. Mm -hmm. It rarely is just one situation by itself. Um, usually there's other precipitating factors. Anyway, that's your little hearts, off the cuff hearts, heart awareness. Heart, heart awareness. And you got me to talk about diet, which is like my worst favorite thing in nursing school. I think I didn't pay much attention. And it shows. She doesn't eat right. <laughs> so when you get on the thread, hassle her because she doesn't listen to me. You don't know if I eat right. You do not eat right. I eat when you're asleep. You do not eat right. Anyway. Um, I know all. Tea. That is not eating. So, rough draft. <laughs> Let's jump right into the knitting and crocheting. Hassle her. <laughs> ah, ah, I have tea here. If it gets on your blue sweater I'm knitting for you, it's your fault. Ah. And this is nice yarn. Ah. You should be ashamed of yourself. Ah. There's a podcast here. You're being very rude in front of all these ah. people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, enough shenanigans, as Josh says. <laughs> <clears throat> I have four. Um, oh, let's see. I have one, two, three, four. You want four? Are you sure? Let me double check. One. Two, three, four. Yeah, okay. And one of which I can't show. Well, I can't show one either. Okay, well, let's just do a bag show together. <laughs> All right. Um, um, the, the first project. One I can't show. Where is my bag for that? Here it is. Can't show. Can't show. These are in our knitting. My, oh, they're both knitting my bag. I should have put it in my uh, autism words. Autism words. I might change it out. This is um, our can't show. Yes. Okay. Can't show. Yeah, that was fast. Yes, it was amazing. Okay. Sorry, project. that was loud. Your turn. Um, ha ha. Okay. Ha ha. This is my ha. um Hawkeye scarf. It's my own pattern, and I've made a little bit of progress on it. Well, I didn't do too a whole lot uh, this week. I was sick, sort of yesterday, and part of today not feeling oh, feel really well, so I didn't do a whole lot of anything this long weekend. For um. You might want to hold it a little closer to the screen, Mom, because they can barely see. <sighs> I'm going to move you. Okay. There we go. So you can see the ridge, the up, the little ridge is right, ridges right here. here and right there. <clears throat> and I made a little bit of progress on it. You can see it's a little longer. Let's see. And I'm having fun with it because it's just pretty mindless and it's a scarf and I'm not really concerned with anything going too wrong with it as long as the... Um, why do I have that there? I have no idea. Were you trying to mark the right side? No. I know what the right side is <laughs> with the ridge. Yeah, I know, but I don't know. It must have been where I was, or I, it must have been where I stopped and I put the um, hook and I just didn't take the hook out, and that's why I had uh -huh. to find another one. So, okay. Anyway, another hook? Another um, stitch marker. So, it's actually working out better than I thought. I think maybe... Um, an adult or a kid or a teen might like this. But it wouldn't go to a guy, I don't think. Um, I think there's too much pink in it. Yeah. But who knows? I mean, some guys like pink. Hawkeye, for example. Yes, Hawkeye. Well, that's... This is the Hawkeye scarf. And for those of you who don't know Hawkeye is, he's an Avenger. And it's not really pink. It's that really girly okay. kind of purple. Yeah, and this is um, No Maker's Yarn. Which is why they changed his uniform color. <laughs> yeah, this is No Maker's Yarn. She makes some fantastic colorways. Taya got me this a couple of Christmases ago. And I just finally found a use for it. So. <clears throat> I think Avengers... No, Avengers hadn't just come out, had it? No, it was before that. Okay. I think it was before... Was it? No, I think Avengers might have just come out. It might have. It's been a couple years, I think. Yeah, because I like Hawkeye, and I like the colors, so... There you go. Okay, so... Uh, let me finish the... Six or so stitches on my needle, and I'll be able to talk about what's on my needles here. What's on your needles? You didn't know we're going to tag the end. Yes, we have to tag Dan. And I'm not going to remember that. It. That Obi-Wan Kenobi, uh, not Obi-Wan, that Darth Vader um, on Instagram. Somebody posted on Instagram, and I can't remember who it was. Oh, I think it was Emily from Fabricant. It was Emily. Posted a picture of Darth Vader in a biker jacket, and it looked kind of like a punk, a street punk with 
you know, rebel scum and a uh, patch that had, like, Imperial Stormtroopers, and he had the big old spike bracelet, so I, I hope, I hope uh, Obi-Wan Committer saw it. I, tried, I tagged him on it, so I hope he saw it. It was funny. You did good, Emily. What are you looking for? I usually have a notebook in here. It probably got transferred to another bag when I was working. What do you need a notebook for? Well, it has my pen in it. I'll grab it from another. Oh, okay. I'll grab it from another bag. Um, just because I wanted to write down. Um, Obi Wan Committer. Yeah. And Fiber Town. You can write on the back of this, but I need it back. I have these here. I've been using napkins before. What are napkins for? Yes, you do have that problem of knowing what to use a napkin for. Ow, foot cramps. Oh. Um, but it was a real fun picture. And also... Fiber Town. Okay. Because I won't remember later when I'm doing the show notes. Okay. Okay. So, all right. Um, moving on. Moving on. Ink Heart is what I'm working on at the moment. Um, it is Lush Pattern by Tin Can Nix. I'm using Miss Babs Yowza Wet a Skein in the Fountain Pen colorway. Um, knitting it for Mom. And the pattern was gifted to me by Nurse Kim Nix. Um, before I show this, I got a message um, from um, Claire of the a Nightbird. Sorry, it takes me a while to remember because she only posts well, monthly. And I was going to mix it up with uh, Molly's podcast. Yes, because they used to podcast together. I always want to say it's from Homespun House, but it's actually Nightbird. Uh, so, Claire from a Nightbird finished up her cardigan um, cowl uh, early. It finished up, I guess, when this month started. Mm -hmm. And I won one of the prizes, which was a Tin Can Knits pattern. And I chose... It was very hard to choose. I wanted every... Everything. Everything, especially from her new ebooks. I had a lot of her patterns already. Oh, it, it made me want to knit more. She has some really gorgeous patterns. Um, and I chose a little, um, it looks like a little caplet. Not, it, it's basically a sleeves and then like a little yeah, short I thing saw on the back. I saw that. It's yeah. got birds on the sleeves. So it's cute. Everything else I had already mm -hmm. that I wanted to, to knit. I love her new book. I I want that blanket on the front. Oh, she has a lot of nice things in there. Yeah, she does. But that made me think of that. Yeah. Um, now back to the pink candidates I'm currently knitting. I did want to tell Polly because he um, he posted a picture of project bag that he made. It he made. Polly, if you're not a member of a Nightbird, you should probably do it. Oh because, yes. Um, she's having a uh, make a project bag cal. Yes. So you uh, want to check that you out. You really should check that out, Polly. Hang on. Yes, <laughs> <had> Polly. <laughs> and a Nightbird. Yes. Um, but it's Miss cause Claire. The, the last bag that Polly made was um, really cute. It was. Uh, I didn't know pirate. he made bags prior to this. I think he made it. He said that. He said. I, that's where I read the uh, thing on Instagram. But anyway. Oh, I'm sure he did. I'm just. I said I didn't know he made bags prior to I think to that this. was one of his first ones. I think, um, I think he's trying it out. Very but. Talented. Yeah, I'm not like, let me check and see. Because, you know, that's... Yeah, because you have to do it on the podcast? Yes, of course I do. And I can't find him right now, so I'm not going to. So, um... Okay, I wrote down those people. Now, finally getting to what we were talking about in the first place with the Tin Can Knits. Uh, pattern I'm working on. Still working on the same sleeve that I've been working on for the past eon. I don't know what I do with my notebook. I usually keep better track of my notebooks. It's not in here. Uh -huh. So, sweaters and sleeves making progress. Very pretty. I'll probably have you try it on at some point to make sure of the sleeve length that you want. Because okay. you said you wanted 17.5 for this one. You went to 18. It was way too long. Yeah. Well, also part of that was that it stretched... It, it um, grew, mm -hmm. but not a whole lot. But yeah, so it is working up well. Okay, out of this pretty. color, I think that's gorgeous. And then of course you've seen this lace work twenty million different times. Okay, okay, all right. Let me just get this one stitch finished. 
Alright, my next project is the Apple of My Eye Baby Blanket from the Newborn Baby Blanket Pattern by Altadena Green. And I didn't think I was going to get a lot done on this, but I had several days of adoration this week in the Blessed Sacrament Chapel. And when I do over an hour or more, I'm able to get some done on blanket after my prayers. So lots of prayers going in for this little baby and whoever it, whoever, whoever it is and the parents. Um, oops. Okay. I'm using Knit Picks Bravo Worsted, and I think it's just the red colorway. This is the back, which I like a lot. Just watch your nails, you want to scrape the table. Yeah. And this is the front. I think I'm finally getting my gauge, <coughs> my handle on my gauge. Sorry, guys. <coughs> I guess I don't want to drink to breathe in my, my drink. That's not a good idea. <laughs> so this is a free pattern, and I'm enjoying it immensely. I think it was Sampler Girl who got me to. I think you're right to try to do this. I really appreciate that. Uh, Vivi Tanya. Mama on um, Instagram. I, I, Instagram. Um, I think she might be on uh, Ravelry as well. Vivi Mama. I can't remember. No, she's Sampler Girl. On, on. No, is she? No. Girl? She's Tanya Marie on Ravelry. Okay, I think. Well, okay. Well, Tanya Marie. Um, uh, it's just I appreciate this. No, I am no, working no. on it. I think you're going to keep mentioning people's names. You should. Have you mentioned her that. first. You mentioned her before I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tanya Marie, thank you very much because this is the pattern that got me back into knitting, and I'm enjoying it. So, I think it's Tanya Marie. Is that true? I, I think you're right because we have a couple of Tanyas. We have we have a couple of hyphenated. We have Tanya Marie. We have. Uh, well, she just won something in someone's podcast. Yes, she won in um in homespun Hall house. Hallies. Yeah, homespun house. I think she won the winner kit, or the, she won one of the two. She kits. won one of the two. Yeah, the first one I think she won. That's the winner one. So this it's living in my it's my bag medium, French ladies bags what I call this. So, um, and my scarf is in my tangerine eight Tardis bag. Okay. Okay. The next one, they got some work, um, is in this bag. Oh, by the way, the, um, Lush was in the Batman bag, um, by Polka Boots. Awesome, Batman bag. Yes. In Or you should thank, um, Victoria Blue for the Batman, uh, link. I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm very much behind. <laughs> Which thread was it in? Um... I don't remember. She just. I'm catching up she slowly, and I will get there <laughs> eventually. Um, so thank you in advance, uh, Victoria. I am just behind. Behind her and behind her. Uh, let me get a pen. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you put it back? Because I don't want to misplace it. A sensible person would leave it out on the napkin. Except I would lose the pen. How would you lose the pen? It's sitting on top of the napkin. I will forget which bag it belongs to. There we go. It matches your bunny bag, right? Mm -hmm. Or is it your pig bag? It's my pig bag. Well, it matches that too. <laughs> Not really. So. How can I laugh, Kathy, doing that? This is the Fisherman's Cardigan, uh, which is a Sarah pattern by Jennifer Hagen. I'm using Barocco Comfort Chunky in the Barley colorway. And... I found, um, I think it's called a sweaterproject.org, um, which helped me make the charts a little more readable to me. I have the information on my Ravelry page. And <clears throat> to make sure I'm doing this, the uh, cables the right way around, I keep referencing one of the other patterns that were, were completed to make sure. And so far it's turning out all right. I think I'm, I'm caught up in a little bit past where I was before when I had to tear out. And... You see the cables starting to show up. That's the and this is bulky, right? Yeah. yeah. This is the back panel. That's awfully pretty. Um. I mean, the cables are gorgeous. This lady designed a very nice sweater. It feels very squishy and soft and very warm. Yes. Um, that would make a nice baby blanket. So it's got several different charts. It's, you're working three charts um, across, uh, three charts across every single row. 
and yeah. you're doing that for 15 inches. Not me. So, um, it's coming along. I'm really enjoying this. I'm getting my cable fix after basically not working cables at all most of the week. So, it made me very happy. Um, cables are probably my first love. I like cables. I haven't worked them in a while, but I like them. So, that is that project. I'm and what bag is that in? The llamas. The creepy llama bag. I hope they are not creepy. Creepy llama bag. It's okay, llama. How can you call this little, this cute little face creepy, huh? I ask you. You submit in triplicate. Okay, my my last project that I can show you is in my Pontific. I call it my words of praise bag. Sorry. I'm trying to it's a me. medium bag. Well, I didn't think of it. If I had, it would have been a good idea, I suppose. <laughs> this is um, the Into the Shire project from the Staggered Shells Wrap Pattern by Patton's. And I'm using a G hook and the un and uh, Heidi's undead yarn in the uh, werewolf base. This is the Shire colorway. That's the name. This pattern is a challenge. Um, it's not difficult. It's just I had to take <laughs> I had to take things out because it just didn't read properly. Part of it was user error. I thought I started on the wrong side, but I didn't for the edging. I'm putting the edging on now. And I think it's going to block out bigger. I hope it does. Because it's, really thin it's very thin. It's almost a scarf rather than a shawl. Um, I love the way the color is working out from Heidi's yarn. Um, I like the pattern a lot. My only my only critique or, or you know disclaimer about this pattern is that it is not the best written pattern. It, it's just, I need a pattern that uh, tells me what to do and not kind of assumes that you know, assumes it. That you know it, or it sounds almost like an older style of writing patterns where they didn't really write a lot of detail. Well, I noticed when I checked the project pages that a lot of people complained mm -hmm. that the chart wasn't matching the, That's um, an issue. the uh, written instructions. And I'm following the written instructions. I don't do charts very well. So I'm, right now I'm just doing the written instructions. And I have a few of the errata, well, not the errata, a few of the notes from other people's project pages printed out and attached to my pattern so I can look back and see. And that has been invaluable. I'm wondering if that's why your thing's so short. I, I don't think so. I don't know. I counted all, everything up. This is easy to count because of the way she, I can't tell you how it's constructed, but you can see the ridges. So you know how you, it's easy to count the, um, the rows. And I had the rows and I had the stitches. So I'm using a DK yarn. And normally I get my, my yarn, is my, my gauge is usually larger. So it mm -hmm. should be larger. So I don't know why it's this small. I'm assuming maybe it blocks out. But I am enjoying the pattern. It's a lot of fun. I hope I can finish it relatively quickly and, uh, and move on to something else. I'm not bored with it. I just I want to move on to something else. So that's that. And that's all my whips. Um, my last whip is Raft, which is the Simple Skip Socks by Adrian Koo. Um, and this is the Undead yarn that, um, is the same colorway as the one that you're going to be getting. It's one of y'all is going to be getting a surprise. It's the Vampire Base in the Freddy colorway. And I think I told you that mine was in the Werewolf Base, which is their DK. So... Nice long leg. I lengthened the leg from the last pair of socks that I did. And the um that's turning out well. The foot is starting to lengthen out nicely. And um, the color's good. Yes it is. Mm -hmm. So I'm getting there. Not quite there. I wear a size mm, nine to nine and a half. I have I've even worn ten occasionally. My work shoes are tens. So I have large feet. That runs in the family, except for Daddy. Yeah, I actually put on a pair of Dad's shoes to take the trash out, and they fit nicely. They fit you? They don't fit me. Well, I was wearing slippers. Oh, okay. But well, that, that makes a difference. Yeah. But still, they fit. I think I hear John, um, what's his name? Jack Lemon. She won't know the difference. She won't know the difference. That was, a creepy, that, that was a creepy movie. 
I like that movie. Mr. Robert? Oh, no, wait. That was, uh, uh, the one I was thinking of was Someone Get Hot. Oh, I didn't like that movie. That's the one I thought you were referencing. He no. He didn't sing that. Though. I'd forgotten. I had, yeah. All I remember was Jack Lemmon. No, okay, yeah. No, you're right. Mr. Roberts is good. Yeah. Um. Even if he did play a creep. Yes, he did. Now, the only movie he didn't play a creep was in that other one with, um, what's her name? Do what I'm telling you. Julie I, Holiday? I didn't watch that movie. Didn't watch that movie. Oh, that's a... So, there we go. Sock. Um, Sorry. We kind of geeked out a little bit. So, there we go. Thank you very much, Heidi. I am enjoying this experience. Heidi's yarns are very, very nice. Yes, um, they are. And I think she just had a shop update. So, if you're in the... Um, I don't think she's updated it yet. Well, she had the um, the Atlantis in there. That's true. I don't know how... I think some of I her... I know she's still dying even though she's gone back to... Uh, yeah. Even though school's restart. And, and you're right. She's a speech um, therapist? She is a speech therapist. Speech pathologist? Pathologist. Someone. And she... Um, she was saying that um, her local, one of her local yarn shops started up, picking up her yarn. That's, that's awesome. cool. <laughs> um, one of her local yarn shops started picking up her yarn to sell, which is really cool. Yeah, congratulations, Heidi. That's yeah. that's awesome. Um, so you better put Heidi down if you haven't already. Uh, she uh, she's already on there for the yarn. Okay. Um, I, I'm already five steps ahead of you. Ha ha. So before we go on to edit. I just want to hit a brief kind of related what was going on over the weekend. Did you want to do whips after that, or we have? I mean, edits I, and uh, and, and yeah. Okay. Um, Davina has expressed uh, has been expressing a desire for a while to learn other kinds of crochet, do patterns. She's actually been expressing a desire to knit mm -hmm. as well, but baby steps. Um, she's Starting with crochet toys, and she's and she go ahead. I'll, I'll talk about. Um, that. and this weekend on I guess it was Saturday that you and Dad went out. She and I mm -hmm. sat down, turned on Celtic music. She loves. Um, she only gets to listen to my Celtic music when she's with me to keep it sort of special. And I have like High Kings, Celtic Women, Solas. Um, John Doyle, a bunch of different people, um, and she only gets to listen to them when she's with me, so that's a huge deal, and we also started crocheting a toy. She's doing very well. I had to teach her again how to crochet. She likes to come. She, she comes through weirdly. She comes in through the back and then yarns over. I think it's the way she learned because she's lefty learning from righties. It's probably our fault for teaching mm -hmm. her that way. But I keep trying to teach her to go from the front to the back. I bet her stuffing doesn't show. I bet it doesn't. Uh, oh, my gosh. Her stuff's bulletproof. <laughs> um, but she's picking up very well. She's gotten to the point where until there's a new stitch, she's actually doing the pattern by herself. Um, I just taught her how to do color change so it didn't jog. And she won't probably need help again until she gets the decreases. So she's doing very well. I think she's getting some confidence. She's getting to the point where she can read the pattern and sort of anticipate what comes next. Um, she's a good teacher. So I'm really, really excited for her. And she's getting really excited. I actually probably need to talk to her about the idea of putting on eyes pretty soon. Right. Um, can't really tell you what she's making yet. Um, she said I could brag but not tell about what project she's working on because it's a surprise. Um, but she's hopefully going to be taking part in the toy along. Yeah, she'd like to do that. She's very excited about it, so she wanted to let me know what it is. I come in, she's like, ah! <laughs> so I know what it is because I bought her, her first patterns. But, um, but yeah, okay. So, and um, it's kind of hard for me to help her with the pattern if I don't know what <laughs> what it is. But Davina is very excited. Um, to anyone who has left messages on her. Her uh, Ravelry page, please be patient. She will get back to you as soon as Talia or I can get the messages to her so she can drop you guys a little response. We really need to print them out so she can write out a message. And we can yeah, it. yeah. And I told her that we can't, she has a tendency to write these huge lit things. I told her they have to be about three or four sentences. <laughs> so, because you'll get a tome. Um, yes. You know, it'll be like 10 pages. So, um, just be patient and we'll get to you as soon as we can. It's our fault, so. Yeah. Okay. And that's your Davina update. Yeah. Um, um, okay. That goes on to edits. Edits. Which are those things which need to be, well, you can edit too, don't you? Yes, I do. Okay, I'll do my edit first and then you can do your edit. Um, 
I finished another square for the um, cabled afghan that was uh, done by Edie Ekman, which is produced by Creative Bug and Red Heart Yarns. It's a free um, a cow. And this is actually probably my favorite square that I've done so far. It's awfully pretty. Gorgeous. I think she called it the Ensign's Braid. Yeah, I think you're right. Because I remember asking you if that was the actual military. It's not focusing very well. It looks pretty good. There, let's stop uh, right there. There we yeah. go. I love the center cable. That's gorgeous. I can see it because this is the whole, this is the whole thing is the Ensign's Braid. This yeah. is the center of the braid and then the side. So it's very nice. Very nice. Next one, I think, is a beehive, which I don't like quite as well, but it'll be fine. Mm -hmm. It'll probably be actually be fairly mindless, even though it's supposedly it, they are going up in complexity. Yeah. But that is, um, I haven't started the next square yet. I'm behind, <laughs> like, <laughs> two squares. When I see Molly from the Homespun House, she said um, something about when she did her shawl pattern, how she thought it was just a triangular shawl, kind of like a how hard can it be kind of thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, doing her new pattern. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm not going to say any more because I'll probably misquote her, but she has a new pattern that's pretty. It's really Is pretty. it out now? It is out now. It is okay. available. Because so. I'm, I'm behind several on her. So I'm plugging you, Molly. You don't know who I am, but I'm plugging you. Oh, uh, pen. <laughs> Just leave it out. <laughs> well, I don't want it to get out of my sock bag. Okay, my, um, my edit is also a block. It was one I thought was finished, and I decided it wasn't. I still have to weave in the ends. It is the um, Lavender Waves pattern uh, from the Ruth, Ruth's Ripple Memory Square by Anastasia Zatel. I wanted to add a border to it. And that kind of a cream kind of makes it a little Victorian. And I have to weave the ends into it. But because I'm not a real big purple person, and this kind of, I love the pattern, and this kind of makes it um, a little more palatable for me because I like the the effect of both together than just the purple alone. So that's that and it is in my basically of Josh she's like, Yeah, I tend to go with boring like tans and browns and everything. But when I try to break out of my normal I then go right to purple. Purple <laughs> It's in my uh Lois Mini Light bag, peacock bag, which is of course my colors, the medium size. This one of I think I, this is oh. one of my earliest bags. It still has the um, bottom that comes out. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's that. Do you have a uh, fo? Um, you have to go first. I have to go first. Okay. Nine. You're probably wondering why I am wearing a sweater in the middle of summer. I'm cold. I As think you it's can cold see, in here. I finished my sweater. I decided I didn't want to put buttons on it. No, no buttons. Um, the sleeves turned out a little longer. I was trying to compensate for the um, for the tall, for the lack of height, and my stitches, forgetting that I was measuring, so they came out a little bit too long. So I'm just folding them up. Okay. I think you might have also had me measure to about there when I did the measurement. It could have been, but, um, which is why I want to make you try on the blue one. This is you well, really do have short little arms. It's not in fact, you just have long arms. I like this a lot. It's I don't know if you can see it. It's really nice. It's a nice swingy sweater, and that's by Shannon. By Mullet Shannon Bold Mullet Boldy. Boldy. I really love it. Shannon, you did a great job. I was going to, I thought about putting a button up here, but I think I just want it to be a swingy. I think a swingy works best. I don't usually like swingy, sorry, out of frame here. I don't usually like swingy sweaters. Except when you do. Except when I do. Apparently my two favorite sweaters are swingy ones. The green one you see me wear on occasion is a swingy sweater. So, um, yeah, I enjoyed it. I would probably make it again if I find the right yarn. Um, and this is yarn that she bought from the Shenandoah Fiber Festival? Right, last year. So Just like this one is made from me. So I will probably got. wear this to the Fiber Festival because I want them to see it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So Oh, and if you're going to the Fiber Festival, say hi. Yes. Um, that, and that sweater turned out really well. Thank you. In spite of Dad thinking it looked like it came from the yeah. 70s. <laughs> My husband says it's dated. It looks like the 70s. I said, no, it doesn't. He doesn't understand. My husband, the artist. So, as some of you might have already seen on Ravelry, um, 
I have a new pattern that is now in the testing phase. I'm still mm -hmm. looking for one or two new te two more testers. I'm mostly filled up. Um, it is the Selena the Cat um, pattern. And by the way, my two, my other design, which is those two. Not Toby. No, Barry. And, oh. ah, he knocked on the original <laughs> prototype. It's okay, Barry. And then here's Iris. So Barry and Iris. They're from the Barry the Cardinal pattern, which is my first pattern. And mine's up there. I don't want to get out of the screen to get them. To get out. Um, so. With his little eyes. <laughs> it reminds me of Lauren's, uh, um, what did she call it? The um, eye. The oh, lurking, lurking eye. Lurking eye. Yeah. But uh, back to Selena. Yes, Selena. Um, originally, I had something very different from what you're going to see. This was my prototype initially. Didn't like how it was turning out. There was too much open work. As you can see, you could stick a finger easily in. I'm going to end up snipping this and reclaiming, and reclaiming the fiber. The fiber. Um, you might be able to reclaim some of the gray. No, it's all color work. Oh, yeah. It's really... Um, so, this was failure. It's cute. But... I use a lot from that head design to come up with Isn't she adorable? Selena. Selena's adorable. So there she is. In all her Selena. Um, she can sort of stand. She can sort of sit. But mostly she lays. She likes balls of yarn. Um, she's a very adaptable pattern. There's a lot of ways you can change her and still keep it within the pattern. The body color can obviously change. Eye color can obviously change. You can decide if you want one tall stocking leg or all the stocking legs to be tall or if you want the short. You can just mix it up. Um, there's just a lot of flexibility um, with Selena's pattern. Um, I was very much enjoy designing her. That's actually what is in my autism bag. I yeah. I designed this pattern with Davina in mind. Selena is not hers. Selena is, is mine. But I'm currently making her um, a cat she has dubbed Junior Cat. Um, and he's a um, an orange cat. Like a marmalade uh, cat? Yeah. Um, he's a ginger. A ginger. Okay. So um, he just is going to have the orange where Selena has the gray. And my cat is in here. I've started testing. So. So. Um. um and you will see the colors later. So that is my newest. So she um, needs a couple time. more testers. She needs a couple more testers. Um, and yeah, it, she was a lot of fun. I'm really happy with the way she's turned out. She's adorable. So um, I have other designs in my brain that need to be fleshed out, but she is the most recently finished one. All right. Um, what else? Royalties. Okay, royalties. I do have some. I got several. Um, do you have any? Okay. I got several, um, um, what do you call it? <laughs> Crochet dude hooks. I see them. When I see them, I pick them up. I'm not going to show you them all. I mean, they're hooks they're with, hooks, yeah. with handles. But the other thing I picked up on that trip, and this way Ty can do hers and we'll be done with that, I went to Walmart, and they had, I didn't know how, this is really soft. This is uh, Lion Brand Heartland, and I want to make some more cerebellas, and I want to make maybe some hats and some scarves. Those colors are really nice. And the colors are fantastic. Look at these colors. I mean, green and blue here, and kind of a wheat or oatmeal or something, and pink. Um... If they had had other colors, I probably wouldn't have picked them up. I didn't see like a heathered purple or mm -hmm. heathered orange or something. It's very soft. It's about 250 yards, I think it is. This is acrylic. It's 251 yards. And it's 100% acrylic. And if you can see the scarf pattern on the front, I'm even thinking of making that. Um, if I can get enough. I thought maybe... This color palette would be really pretty. 
or even this one. But I, I'm probably going to use this for Pinktober. Um, so yeah, that's what I got. That's my stash enhancement. Um, mine is. I've been talking about making Davina Blair for a while. I had the pattern, the drops mm -hmm. pattern. This was on sale. And who found it? Mom who, did. Who did? Who did? Who did? So, this is Schott, Schockenmeyer, Schockenmeyer, S SMC. Uh, you know who would be able to do that is, um, I bet that looks German. I bet It does look German. I bet that Molly could tell us what that was. And you know who my, I think that also Josh might be able to. He might, yeah. It's extra merino. Um, the colorway is. It's lemon, isn't it? Party. 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 Farb. Fabre's Fabre's color. Yeah. Um, the only reason why I know this because I've had several yarns that are seen in German, and I, I've I've seen that on. I believe that always needs color. So, that's the color. It's very, very yellow. It's very Davina. Very, very Davina. Uh huh. And she doesn't know about it yet, so... No, she does not. Eventually, I will cast this on. This is DK weight. And it's machine washable. I'm going to have to go back and look at that yarn, because it, they had a lot of colors. They did. Yeah. Um. So, and that came actually really quickly. Did we mark the site so we know how to get to it? Mm, I, if I found... If I looked at my deleted box, I might find the message again. Because I, I think I sent it to you. Yes, you did. Yeah. I don't remember if I marked it or not, because I saw some yarn that was really pretty. And it was fairly reasonable for DK weight, so, mm -hmm. you know, okay. Of course, it was on sale, but even off sale wasn't that expensive. All right. Um, okay, do you have anything else? Just autobiography. Okay, I do too. Um, oh, before, yeah, okay, that's good. But I'll go ahead and autobiography. Um, I was doing a writing group called F2K. I had to pull out a bit with all of the um, various designy type things, and I just am having difficulty keeping up everywhere. Right. And y'all at Ravelry are actually my first um, priority. Priority. So I had to drop off there, um, which is fine by me. But you're still going to pop in for the occasional prompt, right? Yeah, very occasional. Right. Um, and I also uh, started watching K. This is your fault and Denise's fault. Knit nerd. No, no, um, it wasn't it, nurse? No, not it, nerd. Um, Denise, the knitting man. Yes, sorry, Denise. Sorry, Kathy. Um, both of them on the brain lately. It. Denise and Kay have been talking back and forth about Pride and Prejudice. Denise had only seen the version with um, Kira Knightley. I have seen both versions, both the Kira Knightley and the Colin Firth version. Now. <laughs> No, I had seen both before. Oh, you had before. Mm -hmm. It's just that everyone at school was so insistent, oh, the Colin Firth version is the only version that um, I immediately got stubborn yeah. and determined that I didn't like the Colin Firth Because she's contrary. Well, everyone contrary. was being, everyone's being Talia, pushy Talia, about Talia, it. Contrary. Everyone was being Talia, pushy contrary. about it. They didn't even want to acknowledge that there was any worth to the Kira Knightley version at all. Um, not Denise and Kay, but the people it's, that bug uh -huh. me at school. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, Keep putting your foot in it. But be, with Kay and Denise talking about it, because Denise, I think, still has to see the Colin Firth version. Uh, I rewatched the Colin Firth version with an open mind, and I do thoroughly enjoy it now. Um, I just, I think I needed more time in between, and um, I've read the book multiple times, and I can see where things came directly from the book. Mm -hmm. So, very enjoyable. Um, I finished it over the course of about two days. Uh while typing up the pattern. I would type up the pattern and then take a, a, a break with Pride and Prejudice. Did you do the rest of it? You... Um, final thing for me is I started re-listening to the Sword of Shannara series on audiobook. I've read the book multiple times. Good series. Books multiple times. And it's interesting reading, reading, uh, <laughs> listening to the audiobook and getting new points of view new realizations about the story and the characters because I'm hearing it through a different medium versus reading it where I, after a while I start to skim. I can't skim when I'm listening to it. So I'm registering more. So it's interesting. Okay. I am also in the F2K uh, 
I don't know how much longer I'll be able to continue because I don't want to fall behind with you all, which I have been since I started F2K, and I don't want to do that. So I will be writing probably more as I can rather than as they are telling me I should. And if it gets to be too much, I will drop out of that and just do prompts as they come up. I did write um, over a thousand words of the shared story. I did a couple of um, prompts and assignments for F2K this week. And um, yeah, a lot of writing. I was happy with the writing this time. Uh, we do have something exciting. Uh, the family that moved in here, we don't have permission to use um. their names. So we won't. They know who they are. They moved in here. We're in Front Royal. Virginia. You see, I was just going to completely uh, rat them out. Is that well, it? we'll just wait till we talk to them. They're, they're, I was just going to rat. I ratted them out last they're week. They're in our parish. I ratted them out well, last I am not going to rat them out. Karen Faye. <laughs> she did it. Anyway. What? I ratted her out last but week. But she might not want to know, have people know where she lives. Karen. And stop that. Anyway. <laughs> They are in our parish church. They Well, they aren't in it now, but they go to our parish church. They are in our neighborhood, our town, and we are getting together on Monday, which is exciting. Very exciting. We are really excited with her and one of her daughters, her college-age daughter. Mm -hmm. So we're, And I don't know what her name is, but um, we, we will see them on Monday, which is really exciting. So, yes. hi, can't wait. Um, yeah, that's exciting. Um, and we'll tell you all about that later. Yes, because um, that's... Because that'll be next Monday before we podcast on Tuesday. So we want we do want to thank um, uh, Maria Wilhelmina once again for her uh, awesome, 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 amazing. We have such generous user, viewers. Uh, yarn donation. I mean, I think we have several prizes there, and it's just it's not uh, Marietta, Mom. It's Marriott. Okay, well, I had a question mark there. Um, Maria Wilhelmina, who is Marriott. Um, thank you very. Uh, <laughs> pulling a Denise, <laughs> my hair. <laughs> okay. Um, Denise is more of a this though. Well, she's just like whatever she does with her glasses. It, yes, Denise, we're making fun of you again because we love you. Um, I but her name down on it. yes, well, we love her. She knows. You it, can so. mention Denise as many times as you want now because I already referred to her name. <laughs> we love her, so she's fun. <laughs> anyway, um, so we are thankful to Maria Wilhelmina for the prizes. You guys are just amazing. Yes. And it enables us to give more and better prizes. Um, because you're so generous. So thank you very much. Um, I think that's it. Uh, yeah, I think that's, that's it. That's all I have. So we wish you a very, very happy, fun-filled week. Um, those of you who celebrate Labor Day in the States, we hope you had a wonderful weekend. And we wish you a terrific week to come full of knitting and crocheting and whatever it is that makes you happy from all of us here. Um, this is Pen, Hook, and Needles, episode 118, and that's a wrap.